We welcome you to Waterloo, Wisconsin, about 40 minutes east of the state capital of Madison, where it's the second stop of the 2017-18 Telenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup. Hi, everyone. I'm Steve Schlanger, alongside the Tour de France veteran Jens Vogt. Here are the current standings in the Telenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup. Matu van der Poel of the Netherlands won the opener last week in Iowa City. As a result, he is the World Cup leader coming into this second race of the campaign. And it is a hot one. Temperature around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. There is a breeze blowing, but the heat will be the biggest story of the day. And here is the front row, some of the top riders in the sport. Lars van der Haar of the Netherlands one of four Dutch riders in the field here today. Michael van Torenhout of the very robust Belgian squad, 19 Belgians more than any other country represented in the 58 rider field here today. Matthew van der Poel, top rider in the sport right now after his win in Iowa City a week ago today. Corner van Kessel of the Netherlands and the Telenet Fidea team always a factor here in the World Cup. That's why he's on the front row. And on his right shoulder, that is Lawrence Swink, who last week in Iowa City was second to Matthew van der Poel before winning in Las Vegas on Wednesday night at Las Vegas. There is the reigning world champion, Wout Van Aert, who did not have a good opener in Iowa City last week, had mechanical issues, and was never a factor in the race. Kevin Powells of Belgium was just off the podium a week ago in Iowa City, finishing in fourth. And Tom Musen, one of the many strong Belgians in the group here today, one of the most consistent finishers on the World Cup, but he struggled in Iowa City with mechanicals and the heat last week as well. 58 riders all together, second race of the season, about to commence today in Wisconsin. Short opening straight by World Cup standards. Uphill and then a right hand turn coming very quickly. So sort of the whole shot, which belongs to Matthew Vanderpool in the white, so critical and already a crash. First turn, several riders hitting the deck. Everybody wanting to be near the front for that turn that, as I mentioned, comes up so quickly, so critical to be near the front. And now Vanderpool already has a gap here in the opening lap. That is Michael Boros of the Czech Republic checking his bike after going down. Well, how's that for a fast start, Jens Vogt? Yeah, that was a fast start indeed. And you can see he's already having like two bike lengths of an advantage. So he must have started like a rocket. Let's hope he doesn't pay the price later for it, because this is not a five-minute race, it's a 60-minute race. Let's take a look back at the crash at the first corner. Happened on the outside. It's kind of a ripple effect of it looked like you guys. He, he might have touched your wheel. I don't think he did slide out. I think he just touched somebody else's wheel. This is the Trek flyover. Side of it painted like a barn, paying tribute to state of Wisconsin and Trex Origins here is a company that began in the mid 70s and just like last week in Iowa City Matthew Vanderpool getting a healthy margin on the opening lap this is exactly what he did last week at the Johnson County Fairgrounds in Iowa it was the start of his wire to wire win where his eventual winning margin was by almost a full minute and here we are just on lap one and he's working his way towards a 10 second lead already. He did exactly the same thing two days ago on this circuit on, well, let's call it the test race they had. And he was winning it in a really convincing style. Yeah, it was a race on Friday that was lower than a World Cup level competition, but still many of these same riders he's competing against today were in that race too, and he beat them all. And he's playing it safe as far as he said. See, he got the leg out to gain more balance. He's not trusting the ground here at all. The high line seems to be the better line through here. Riders taking various approaches. Very tricky, treacherous, off camber, high speed. And as we saw in the women's race, it was very slippery. A lot of women went out. Some crashed into the barriers on that very descent. 
And now from the descent, immediately back uphill. And now this is the Sigafredo runner. And Vanderpool has to get off his bike and carry it up the hill, just too steep to ride. And have a look at the gap he already put in. It looked like it's close to 10 seconds within the first lap. That is very impressive. Or oh, it's suicide. Let's see what that, how that turns out. This climb steep and dry. And maybe it's the dryness that's the bigger factor because it's getting silty, slippery, no grip for the riders. And that makes it very difficult to ride. And so as a result, we're seeing so many get off and carry. On the plus side, talking about dry conditions, we haven't seen too many bike changes. So I believe the riders, if they don't have a mechanical issue, there's no reason to change the bike on a course like this because the bike just never gets dirty or muddy. So they're gonna play it safe and save the energy. Oh, see, now some of them jump up here and some get off the bike. So it's a 50-50 here between the tactics they're gonna use. That was Quentin Herman's number seven there. Last week on the podium in Iowa City, City finishing third. Here's our leader, Matthew Vanderpool. And he was talking about that race on Friday that he won here and also the practice rides yesterday about how slippery it was becoming, how difficult it was to control his bike on various sections. And he would have to be very mindful and conservative here today. But not a lot of conservative riding so far to open up this kind of a gap. As you can see here, they don't even hesitate to get off the bike and run or jump. They just go, yeah, of course, I'm gonna stay on the bike and ride it. Pretty impressive skill, I must say. He's just killing it in a moment. I am impressed. This is the battle for second place here, and look how big it is. I mean, we're talking 15 or more riders here, all grouped together. Second time passing the pit area. They're calling the lead 12 seconds on the GPS for Matthew Vanderpool here on this opening lap. After getting a hole shot, has not looked back. Here comes one rider, changing bikes, and that is the world champion, Wout Van Aert. Last week, had some mechanical problems in Iowa City, was never a factor in that race, was very discouraged. Hope to turn the page for the race today in Waterloo, but he's already lost a lot of ground. He did, and I can tell you from my experience from racing yesterday, the pit stop area, the surface, it's a lot rougher, it's a lot slower, so you lose more time going through the pit stop area. How often were you saying shut up legs during your uh, ride on this course yesterday? Every single lap. <laughs> but it was only three laps. My race was only 30 minutes. Did they get? Did they let you have a big breakaway like you were known for during your road career? I had a terrible start, so it took me one and a half laps to actually gain get to the first position. Now this is a little shower area they have to cool off the riders. You will not see something like this in a typical. World Cup cyclocross event, especially over in Europe, where they many times race in freezing conditions, but it was a special provision put in because the temperature is just so hot here in Wisconsin today. Now, this is Matthew Vanderpool coming into this area that is known as Trek Hill. In the women's race, some were sliding around, having to get off their bikes. It was deceptively tricky and slippery. These are all the riders battling for second on the screen, led by Quentin Hermans. Look at that gap to the man on the right-hand side of the screen, our leader, Matsu Vanderpool. Six and a half minutes in and already a sizable margin. Hermans again on the podium in third last week in Iowa City behind Vanderpool and Lawrence Swake, who finished second. And Hermans leading this big group in the battle for second right now on the opening lap. Waiting to see just how many laps the riders will do. They hope to come in at just a little more than an hour in terms of the total time of the race. So they have to go for about 15 minutes or so before they can calculate just how many laps it'll take them to get to that hour plus mark on this 2.8 kilometer course that's just under two miles in total length. End of lap number one, the leader by a long way is Matu Vanderpool of the Netherlands, a replay from last week in Iowa City, the Dutch rider has a lead after an opening lap of just over seven minutes. His margin is a dozen seconds.
Quentin Hermans leading that next group through in second place. And looking over his shoulder, he's wondering who else is going to come through and help pull. Who's going to help the pull Vander pull back? Or is it going to be a battle for second right from the start? Well, it's too early to say that. I think the race is not over yet. But something else I noticed, I uh, checked, um, we probably have 80% of the riders riding with a bottle cage on there, which then is good in the heat, but it makes it more complicated to get the bike on your shoulder because the bottle cage is in your way. But they probably sacrificed a little bit of comfort for the necessity to have actually some water with them because it is extremely hot here. Matthew Vanderpool already over the Trek flyover. He is adding to his margin. Another bike change in the pit here. It's like Lawrence Swake, who last week was second and who won at Cross Vegas on a Wednesday. And at that Cross Vegas race out in the desert on Wednesday night, it was the Swake brothers finishing 1-2. Lawrence ahead of Dieter. So two Swakes in the top two. Not all of these riders made the long trip out to Las Vegas for that midweek event. Many stayed here in the Midwest to concentrate on this race this weekend. Las Vegas was not a World Cup this year the way it was last year, so not as high a profile. So many riders choosing to remain in the Midwest as a result. That to Vanderpool. What a beast from the opening gun. Opening up a huge lead. And right now, the battle for second is the only battle we have. It's a 21-second lead for Vanderpool over second place as he comes through this tricky descent, the off-camber descent down through the trees. Jens, how big of a surprise is this? I know Vanderpool did a similar thing last week in Iowa City, but how was he able to get away so quickly like this? Um, I talked to people uh, when he did like this little test race here um, and they said, you know, I see in him a younger version of Peter Sagan. He's brilliant on the road. He's super brilliant out here. I think he just got the skill set, taking the corner just a little faster than anybody else. He accelerates. He got a lot of punch power. So he can just accelerate out of his corners quicker and you can see him running up this hill already and there's nobody else in the picture. A Sega Fredo run up. And number 20, Matthew Vanderpool, the first one up it. Nobody else has even started that run up yet. And it is Tim Melier of Belgium leading this next group. He's pushing the bike instead of carrying it. Either way, he's off the bike, but perhaps pushing saves a little more energy than carrying it. That's always a concern on a hot day. How much energy you have to use when you get off your bike. It'd be easier if you could ride it to save the energy, but it's just too slippery and steep and they can't do it. Another thing you have to um, pay attention to is your heart rate. In a hot condition like that, if your heart rate once is too high, it is very, very hard to bring it back down into the green level. So once you overcook it, then it's hard to come back from that. Yeah, that's the question with Matthew Vanderpool. Going out hot the way he has, a fast start like we saw in Iowa City last week, but with the heat, will it at some point play a role? Because unlike a road race, where you can go back in the peloton, hide and recover for a while and find that second win, you can't do it in cyclocross. If you drop back at any point during a race like this, it's only an hour long and full throttle, your race is over. That's true. But I believe now that he got almost 30 seconds, 28 seconds, the latest information we have here, his advantage, he got time to play with now. So he can go from attack motors back into cruise motors and try to ride a little slower, a little more efficient, and save a little energy, recover a little, and hopefully for him, hang on to this position until the end of the race. He looks flawless. The way he jumps, the way he takes the corners, I'm just blown away by that. Is it more a case of other riders not wanting to chase so early or the Vanderpool is so strong that they can't chase in the early going? I believe he took him by surprise. I don't think anybody really seriously saw it. He is actually trying to gain 30 seconds within the first two laps. They thought probably he just wants to go to the front to have the best possible line. They never expected to him to go all out within well, they, the first lap. They saw him do it last week in Iowa City when they had been prepared this week. They should, right? I mean, it's like a DJ vu for them. 
But now with this kind of a margin, half a minute on only the second lap. Vanderpool has a race now in front of him that has all of a sudden changed in complexion because it alters the way he can race. He can be more conservative. He can take the line that he wants. He can dial it back if he needs to. He can measure his effort. All of these things that you typically couldn't do in a group, Vanderpool now has at his disposal as he works with this big lead. Going through that sprinkler a moment ago. Even with the breeze, brutal conditions here in Wisconsin. It's the first official weekend of autumn, but it feels like midsummer with a temperature near 90. And if you can believe it, it was even hotter yesterday and on Friday. It's cooled off by a few degrees, but still the heat and humidity combined are making it extremely hard for the riders. Certainly not something they're used to on the bulk of the World Cup season that takes place in the fall and winter months over in Europe where it can be freezing, snowing. I believe most of them, they came early enough to get adapted to the different time zone and the climate, so it shouldn't affect them too much. Oh my God, just look at the distance he put into them. Holy smokes, that is impressive. He won by almost a minute last week. And his lead right now on just the second lap is over half a minute. So we could see even a bigger finishing gap this week than we saw just one week ago. Well, some riders having to get off. Steep and slippery, having to dismount, push their bikes up. And now here is Metu of Vanderpool. His lead swelling as he starts out on lap number three with a sizable advantage in Waterloo, Wisconsin. And the way he was sprinting across the line, it did not look like he is actually taking a conservative approach. He looked like he's still all in. And now somewhat of a gap opening up in the battle for second place that was so tight for a while. On the start of lap three of nine, there, the Belgian in second. Torna Van Kessel comes across third. And Tornhout rounding out the top five. Where's the world champion? I haven't seen him there. Now remember after the bike change in the pit, he was well back. But Vanderpool continues to keep the pressure on, looking to bury the rest of this field. Get some air on the flyover even. Loves to get air going over the flyover. Very much a showman, animated rider. And if he can bury the field here in the opening laps, he could really throttle back later on. And maybe that's the thinking. I mean, as long as he doesn't have some kind of an issue, a mechanical, a crash, He's putting this one away early. Well, I guess he's also counting on the fact that maybe one or two gonna catch him. There's not a group of 10 riders gonna catching him. So maybe one of, you see that? He is yeah. doing a little fun jump up there. He must be feeling so good still. Peter Sagan would be proud. Yes, absolutely. The now three-time road world champion after his win earlier today in Norway. That was impressive to say the least. Now this is also impressive. Matu Vanderpool from the opening gun, taking the lead and not looking back. And for a tricky section like this, he doesn't really have to worry. He can take the foot out, tripod, maintain the stability he needs and not have to worry about speed and staying ahead of other riders. That's another good point, Steve. When you're by yourself, you can judge the effort you want to do. And especially like after this little uh, hills and the, the running parts, you can jump on the bike and accelerate the way you want. If you was a group, you have to follow the wheel ahead of you and sometimes you have to go harder than you want to catch that bike again, to catch that rider again. So it is more efficient to be by yourself. Back to the Sega Freda run up after the brief section on pavement. This 2.8K course in Waterloo, Wisconsin, just 10% pavement, 90% grass, dirt or rocks. Riders going wide on that descent. 
Hard to control, it's so slippery. So as we can see on the screen, it's nine laps for the riders to uh, finish. Um, so when they cross the finish line now, it's one third of the race done. And now this group on the Sega Fredo run up led by Melier. Seven Belgians in the top ten, but the race led by a Dutch rider and a Metu van der Poel. Thirty-seven seconds, the gap to second place. More riders now riding the logs, given the fact there's more gaps in the field now. It is the Trek factory off to the right. Trek's world headquarters here in Waterloo. Again, just about 40 minutes east of Madison, the state capital, about an hour west of Milwaukee. Vanderpool with nobody in sight. Second time past the pit on this lap. They passed the pit twice in every lap. The other riders now in the fight for second place over the barriers. There is Swan Penner, the reigning world champion. He is way back in the field. In that rainbow jersey. It's going to be the second consecutive difficult race for him on this U.S. swing of the Cyclocross World Cup. After finishing 14th last week in Iowa City, outside the top 10 right now, early on today in Wisconsin. There was a little hiccup of that rider that's now in the pits coming there. Either he crashed into the barriers or he seemed to have a problem. The guy that's just coming there at the pits, he seemed to have a major issue. Lawrence Swake. We've already seen him in the pit once. This is the second time. There's something wrong with his shoe now. Yeah, his so he's got an issue with his shoe. The buckle on his shoe for Lawrence Swake has become a problem. And boy, oh boy, what a tough race this has turned into for him. Two times in the pits, losing a lot of time. He was second last week in Iowa City, first on Wednesday in Las Vegas, but he's going to be well done in the standings today. Go, go, go. Conceding a lot of time here in the pits. Maybe just for the German champion coming past. Oh, look back at. Oh, there's a crash here back oh. there. That's it. That explains. I almost did that two days ago, or yesterday, almost. So I know exactly the corner. That'll cost Lawrence Swake. No issue for Matthew Vanderpool. At the very front of the race. These guys actually take an interesting line on this uh, uh, track uh, hill there, the run up. Um, they go from the low, from the bottom, take a wide corner. And other people, like other racers, I've never seen it taking that line. So the boys here, the men doing slightly different than the ladies or whatever anybody else does it. What's the advantage to that, do you think? I think you try to take some steepness out of the hill, try to get a bit of more momentum going um, to get a little bit more speed going into the climb. And this will be the start of lap four coming up for the so leader, Vanderpool. See, they show up from the bottom out of the shade. We can't even see him anymore. And that I've never seen in any other race before in the last in the whole weekend. Three laps down for our leader, Metu Vanderpool. And let's see where the lead stands as the next riders get set to come through. How much has it grown? 37 seconds at last check on the GPS. It's hovering a little bit, but he keeps adding one second, two seconds to it. So he's going to be close to 40 seconds when he is on the finish line, I believe. Don Sota moving into second. Earlier in the lap, and now the lead for Vanderpool. 
is going to be clocked at right at 35 seconds as a group of four comes across in the battle for second place. Belgians. The world champion just passed the finish line, so he is going to find it hard to even get a top 10 here. Doesn't seem to have the best day today, poor guy. He was 12th place, 51 seconds back when he started that most recent lap. just all over this race. You have Vanderpool, a Dutch rider leading. Corner Van Kessel, his Dutch teammate in fourth. But beyond that, the Dutch occupy every other spot in the top 15. Again, 19 Belgians all together in the race here today. 58 riders in the field. Well, I still think the Dutchies do it a lot more efficient. They only have two people here, but they are leading in fourth. Chapeau for that. Now the most interesting battle was for second place last week in Iowa City. Could be the case here today, although the chase group, this contingent of four starting to break up somewhat as we're back to our leader, Vanderpool. And a drag in the foot on the dirt there. And you see the gusting winds. It's been breezy all day long, but it seems like the wind is gusting more now here in the late afternoon hours. I, I would agree, Steve, I would agree. The wind's just getting a little stronger more. Or now, just getting a little stronger now. Tell that a team with two riders in this chase group. So half of the group of four would expect them to take turns pulling here. And these other riders Certainly looking to the Telnet team to do the chasing, but one of the riders having somewhat of an issue there, getting close to the barriers, and Vanderpool continuing to ride away from them. Second group here behind Vanderpool. Again, Sota, Mernier, Van Kessel, and then Torenhout are the riders in that second group. Over half a minute behind our leader. Boy, how discouraging must it be for some of these riders to have someone like Vanderpool just disappear on the opening lap right away from you and take a huge step towards putting this race away so early on such a hot day. They know it's going to be hard and demanding. And when one guy rides away, I know maybe it's not surprising, but psychologically, how difficult is it for them? Well, I guess they are already starting to focus now on uh, maybe getting a second place. Here again, we see three people jumping and one was running. So majority of them actually, yes, trying to uh, jump up there and stay on their bikes. Staying on the bike, I think it's quicker. But if you run, no, running is quicker, but you lose a little more energy. Running is just safer, but you lose more energy. Well, Matthew Vanderpool, the 22-year-old, who was actually born in Antwerp, Belgium, but grew up in the Netherlands no doubt has terrific form that he has brought over from his mountain bike season because that just flows right into the start of the cyclocross season. But the cyclocross campaign is so long, the interesting thing from here on out is going to be how long can he hold this for? After today's race, they take a break of almost a month before the next World Cup event in mid-October over in Europe. The World Championships are early February, so clearly Vanderpool benefiting from his mountain bike form at the start of the cyclocross season. Now the question is, how long can he hang on to it? Well, maybe um, Van der Poel goes, I want to win the World Cup, and I see how I go at the World Championships. And the reigning World Champion, he goes, I want to defend my title, so I'm going to start a little easier into the season and just getting in my peak shape when I need it. 
at the World Championship. So maybe different approach to the season. Now look at this, Wad Van Aert. Another bike, bike change. change. That's number two for him. So you have Wad Van Aert, the reigning world champion with his second bike change. We saw last week's second place finisher, Lawrence Swake, in the pits twice already. So some high profile marquee names having difficulties here in this race today in Waterloo. Now there was a crash a moment ago. We'll take you back to it shortly. This man has not crashed. Our leader, Matthew Vanderpool, another perfect ride so far today in Wisconsin. Almost looks too easy. Yes, it does. So yeah, now we can watch. He takes a very low line. He almost disappears in the shade down here. And then he takes the corner from the outside, trying to gain the momentum, but tire slip one time on the loose sand that you have to get off the bike. Now he's ridden that most of the times up it, but with a big lead, can afford to get off and run a little. His lead right now at 36 seconds. Race for second place still between four riders. And Matthew Vanderpool making this left-hand turn that takes him back to the start-finish area. Over halfway through the race now. There's the gap between the riders battling for second and the next group on the course. And Matthew Vanderpool open to add to his lead as he starts out on lap number five. Champion in this group here, Watt Van Aert going up the hill. Here's the four vying for the remaining two spots on the podium, second and third. Always a Telenet rider at the front of this group doing the chasing. And Vanderpool's lead now 39 seconds. Four laps in the bag already. I must say I'm impressed or surprised by the differences in time gaps here we see. I mean, they're all world-class athletes. I thought they would stay closer together for the first half of the race. But we see huge gaps already, little groups everywhere. And it's not even half of the race done yet. I'm, I'm surprised how hard they race. There's no holding back here. There's not too much tactics going on here, I believe. Is Vanderpool just that much better than everybody else? Are they miscalculating something? Or is there something that is a part of the nature of what we've seen over the last two weeks in these races in the US that have made such a big difference? I believe it might be a combination of like all of it. He is young, he's an upcoming talent. He is, I think, just really gifted by nature with the talent. And as you said, he just comes out of a mountain bike season, so he got the rhythm. He got the hard racing miles in their legs and uh, the rest of the guys, they're just starting here so they missing some of the rhythm. So that plays to his advantage, I believe. Ryder coming out of the pit here. And Vanderpool once again onto the off-camber slippery descent. Taking the same line each and every time through there. And then back uphill. Lap five of nine on the day as they try to bring the men in with a total time of just over one hour. So now, since we are sitting at the start and finish line here, I see still riders crossing the line. They got almost three minutes they are uh, behind him. They're going to get left. He's going to lap some of these riders. And riders that are that far back will be pulled off in order to keep the track clear. 
Yeah, let's hope that uh, when once he start lapping the other riders and nobody gets caught behind somebody slower, that they show enough respect and get out of the way. So I just heard that we're not gonna have people getting left. They have 80% rule. So if you are 80% behind the leader's time, they take you out. Segafredo run up. But all of these guys are running behind in the overall. But it's still four of them, so they can share the work a little bit. Maybe it helps them in the end. Don't forget, we just have done half of it. Uh, two riders in that group of four from Telenet, and they're both at the front now. This is the next group behind them. That includes Watt Benner, the world champion. <laughs> Matthew Vanderpool over the barriers. Now, because of the technical nature of this course, a lot of turns just like this in an open field, Vanderpool will always get a sense of where everybody else is behind him. He will always have to turn around. He'll be able to look over to the side either way and oftentimes see where the others are. Also, I believe he has enough teammates on the, on the course, they tell him exactly the position of everybody else and how much time he has. Oh, he's so good through the turns, in the run-up, on some of the descents. His technique has been virtually flawless. No mistakes. And when you build up a lead like he has now, which they're calling 43 seconds on the GPS, you can even afford some mistakes and still manage your lead. You can bleed a little time and still not be too concerned. That's what getting such a big margin early can do for you. The thing you always just hope for is that you can stay free of the mechanicals, because those are the more unpredictable elements. Here he was enjoying the water, the little shower there. He actually did move over there, so get closer into the shower, get some fresh cold water to freshen the body up and cooling down the body, which is an important fact on a hot day like today. Yeah, many times riders won't have bottles in cyclocross because it's such a short effort. And many times it's much colder, but with the heat today, right around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, many choosing to carry bottles. I believe this might be the only World Cup race in the season where we see the riders starting with the bottle on the... Other riders going through the shower, which is again an unusual feature that's just put in for today because of the heat. Don't see that anywhere else. Back to Vanderpool at the front. More like an exhibition for him these last two weeks than an actual competition. Once the World Cup takes a month-long break after today's race, a lot of these riders are going to have to use that time to figure out what they can do to challenge this man who is about to start his next lap momentarily. Matthew Vanderpool, his lead ballooning in Waterloo, Wisconsin, starts out on his next lap on the way to what should be his second consecutive World Cup win. That's Toon Ertz going up the climb now. World champion Wout Van Ert next here in the rainbow jersey. Tunerts, the European champion right now. Here's our second group on the course, that group of four, Sota, Ben Kessel, Ben Tornhout, and Melier.
well behind this band, Matu Vanderpool. 43 seconds back. And he's still not slowing down. Look at the power in him. Again, a little hop over the yeah. track flyover. He is still enjoying himself. Now, Wad Van Aert going to come to the front now. The world champion. After two trips through the pit area, now coming to the front, looking to lead the chase. I believe he's still looking for some uh, good points at the World Cup to keep himself in contention with it and uh, not losing all hopes for a you know, World Cup lead or World Cup win one day. So he's just trying to limit the loss. Or he's still hoping to catch up to this group. Well, even the minor placings do carry UCI points, and that impacts your starting position for the next race. And as we saw today, and also last week in Iowa City, the start is paramount. You have to be near the front to have any shot at finishing near the front. So an accumulation of points throughout the season is critical. It's not like you can see a Matthew Vanderpool ride to the front and say, all right, we're going to take the rest of the race off. You still have to fight for every position because that carries points. Altogether, it's the top 20 places that will offer points. But that could still be several minutes down. So the fight can be intense, not just at the front of the race, but down through the field. Matthew Vanderpool, a 22-year-old. World champion back in 2015. A two-time junior world champion. Two-time European champion. One of his two junior cyclocross world titles, actually one in the U.S. That was in Louisville back in 2013. And this is a course that they've been racing on at various levels since 2013, as the Trek Corporation built this course a few years ago, and they've been holding races here for the last several years in anticipation of eventually landing a World Cup event for the first time this year. Oh, Ryder getting caught along the fencing the there. In fact, that was corner Van Kessel. So, Holland, first and second. This is Van Kessel again that little fencing area. Didn't cost him much. Still led the way in the Sega Freda run-up. Kevin Powell's going up in the blue. So the formula is pretty simple for Vanderpool out front, but with the four guys that are still battling for second place, what are they thinking at this point? Over halfway through the race, what's the calculus in their minds about how they're going to pull off the podium position? Yeah, I believe uh, they need a minor miracle to catch this rider, our leader here, uh, Van der Poel. So they're going to settle for second place, and now they, I think they, be, they start making some on, plans buddy, of got, how they're going to secure a spot on the podium. So. Hopefully, to make the race more exciting, we're going to see some attacks in the chasing group coming soon. Three of those riders in that group of four are Belgians. By the way, Jeremy Powers, one of the top American riders, has pulled out of the race. This man, Matthew Vanderpool, pulling away in the race. All right, Lions, let's go! Now, not much change these last couple of laps. Still, Vanderpool with the sizable lead at the front, group of four. The second contingent on the course. 
And they really haven't split up too much. The biggest change has come back here with Wout Van Ert leading the third group. Tunert's the rider right behind him. So you have the world champion in Wout Van Ert, the European champion in Toon Ertz. And they are pacing that third group on the course that is now starting to come apart somewhat. Wout Van Ert, though, looking stronger. And things seem to be going better for him now as his race has progressed. Remember, two trips through the pit earlier on really this cost him. On this corner, I noticed our leader here, Van der Poel, he is the only one taking the uh, one leg out of the bunch out of the pedal. Probably gives him more balance. He is almost the only one in the whole race. He does it every lap, so I think for him it's just the fastest way to go around the corner. The back wheel is sliding around the corner. His leg on the inside of the corner is out of the pedal to give him more, st more stability. And I don't think anybody else does it like him. Just kind of letting the bike slide, taking the turn. Just letting it happen, letting the bike do the leading. Makes it an easy way to go through because you don't really have to worry about all the seconds at this point. A 49 second gap at the moment on lap six of nine. And the next lap about to commence for Matthew Vanderpool. Once again, he starts a lap solo. No one even in his rear view mirror. Matthew Vanderpool of the Netherlands maintaining a consistent speed, just over 25K per hour, and leaving the field in the Wisconsin dust. I believe it's fair to say he's going to win again with more than a minute of advantage. He's already at 50 seconds, three laps to go. So about, about 15 minutes, maybe. And uh, yeah, that's enough time for him to actually gain enough time. So he's going to win with another minute of advantage. Three laps remaining for all these riders. Vanderpool, the first to start the final three. And now our second group. With nobody really taking a big dig. And now Soda Van Kessel, Van Tornhout, and Melier start the first of the final three laps. Trek flyover for Vanderpool. More straightforward this time. Maybe the heat and the fatigue starting to set in. No little hop over the top of the flyover. Now that's who Vanderpool went to the front at the opening gun and has once again led from the outset, was the first through the opening corner and has never looked back, his lead widening with almost every lap. 50 seconds, the margin back to this second group of four right now. This group starting to accelerate a little bit more, it seems. second group on the course. Matthew Vanderpool on a little uphill after the descent. Oh, Jens, how many times in your Tour de France career did you have a road stage where you essentially just hit the hammer at the gun, rode away from the field, and you stayed away the whole day? Never. <laughs> so you never experienced something like this, huh? I guess the last time I did that was when I was like 11 years old. <laughs> but after that, never. A unique feeling indeed. And it's, it's impressive. I mean, he's hanging on to it and he's not slowing down. He's still looking strong, flawless. He doesn't do any mistakes in terms of, you know, jumping uh, over obstacles, getting on and off the bike. He is still absolutely perfect. He's still in control. And speaking of road racing, as these next four deal with the descent, 
Vanderpool has some experience on the road and has shown his versatility as a cyclist already at the age of 22. We've documented his cyclocross achievements, but as he has turned to road earlier this season, he won a stage at the Tour of Belgium, won stage two against some pretty high profile riders. Yes, I believe he did beat a certain Philippe Gilbert. And I think it's fair to say that Philippe Gilbert is not the worst rider in the world. There's the chasing group on the track run-up. Still all four of them together, but it does look like they go a little faster. Pardon me, it was a Sega Fried run-up. Now for Vanderpool, he actually won three different times on the road this season. And uh, much of the big speculation in the Belgian media is about Vanderpool and Wout Van Aert turning their attention full-time to road racing because there's more money in the sport and more prestige for certain races. So will they, sooner rather than later, go over to the road full-time and leave cyclocross behind? Well, I had the chance to have breakfast with his manager, uh, Jan, this morning, and we talked about exactly that. But I believe it was a private conversation, so I don't think I'm allowed to actually tell everybody. Oh, you're just going to tease us? Well, oh. yes, actually, yes, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. Well, what do you think the smart move would be in your mind? I would try to become world champion one more time here. Because he's obviously in really good shape. I would try to actually be the best you can be at this sport. Well, and then let's see how far you can go at some, some other sport. How hard would it be to split his time? Do some cyclocross races, maybe just the world championships, but spend more of your time on the road? It seemed to work, or did work for a while for Stinex Duba. He was racing full gas in the classic season, still becoming twice world champion in cyclocross. But it's both of them a hard sport, season are long, you have no break in between, so you risk to burn out your body at the age of 25 if you want too much. And think about the road cycling season by itself is so long, from January all the way through October. And it also requires a different type of rider, these two sports. You gotta be strong, athletic, and punchy to be good in this sport, because it's one hour. You don't need any bicep or any shoulder, any muscles on your upper body as a road cyclist, because you just have to be as skinny as you can be to be a good road cyclist. So it's different type of body needed. So it's hard to split it up. In the moment, it seemed to work really good for him. Well, he is clearly dominating at the outset of this World Cup campaign through the first two races in the U.S. This is the second group again on the course, a group of four. Not gaining any ground, but this group also not splitting up yet. As that contest for the final two spots on the podium is yet to really take shape. And where he walked up last time, while Benner rides up that little climb, this time through. Two laps to go for Wout Van Ert and the others. Wout Van Ert leading that third group. Behind this group of four with Matthew Vanderpool, the man here out front making the final turn on the course, headed towards that start finish line. His lead growing. And now two laps remaining for the 22-year-old Dutch rider Matthew Vanderpool. And still keeping the average speed above 25 kilometers an hour. That is very impressive at this circuit. It, it's a tough circuit. Heat has certainly not made it easy. The course, by comparison to some of the others on the World Cup, is probably one of the more mild courses that they will race. Not as much elevation change as they had last week in Iowa City. There are some technical corners, but not all that difficult. 
some slippery sections because of the hot and dry conditions. However, they, they will see much more demanding courses in Europe when the World Cup season resumes next month. See the difference of the body language. Them just cruising across the line. Now they go a little faster. And we just saw the leader, how he is just punching. He's just punishing the pedals going so fast. So, yeah, I think they just realized they're never going to catch him again. Well, better in this group, the world champion. And this group starting to come apart. The second group just rode through 55 seconds behind Vanderpool. They wowed Van Ert group over a minute down. Not a good day for the other two podium placers from last week in Iowa City. Lawrence Swank, who was second last week in Iowa, has been to the pit twice. He's crashed. He's well down in the standings. Quentin Herman, who was third last week in Iowa, he's over a minute down in ninth place at the moment. Looks like the final two podium placers this week will come from the four-man group that contains Cornevet Kessel, Tim Melier, Dan Sota, and Michael Van Torenhout. That group of four that has consistently been the second group on the course most of the day. And now Wout Van Ert really cranking up the pressure here. Trying to make a move and gain as much time as he can. He is really going for it. Last week, he was undone by a series of mechanicals and wound up finishing in 14th place. Two and a half minutes behind Vanderpool. Now the American champ, Stephen Hyde, just started his eighth lap, coming through over a minute down. Segafredo run-up for the leader, Vanderpool. Now working his way towards the end of this two-race World Cup stop in the U.S. to kick off the season. The 2017-18 Telenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup beginning a week ago today in Iowa City. And then coming here to Waterloo, Wisconsin, 40 minutes northeast of Madison. And coming here for a World Cup for the first time ever at the Trek Bicycle Company's World Headquarters. It's a campus that has been staging cyclocross racing for several years, but this is the first time it's ever been designated a World Cup race. And they hope it's the first of many. And good crowds each of these two opening weekends in the American Midwest. Despite hot conditions in both locations in the 80s last week in Iowa and close to 90 today in Wisconsin. From what I've heard from uh, feedback of the riders, they liked it. It's nicely organized. Parking spot is there, the changing zone, the bike change zone is well organized. They like it. Nice setup. So hopefully everybody wants to come back and we have this World Cup going on for another 10 years. Yeah, they like to hold the first two races of the World Cup season in the U.S. You don't know until they come out with the calendar for the next year exactly who's going to get those two, but this race here in Waterloo has been a big success in its first year, so things you would think look good for their future. How about the future of our second group on the course? This is contingent of four, and it is still almost a minute behind our leader. Oh, damn, Messi Vanderpool. goes first bike change, I think, if I remember right. It's his first bike change. Yep, first time in the pit for Matu Vanderpool. Got a fresh bottle on there, too. That's, I think, maybe the only reason they got a fresh water bottle, because in cyclocross, actually, it is forbidden or outside the rules to grab a drink from somebody outside. You can have a fresh bottle on your bike, and I think, see how he's cooling his body down, pouring cold water over his head. That's probably the main reason why he went into the pits. Yeah, you can only get a feed, you can only get water in the pit area in cyclocross. It's not like in the road discipline where you can get it from the team car or Swaniers. All services, all mechanicals, all feeding in cyclocross has got to be done in the pit. Now, fans can squirt riders with a bottle. That's not forbidden. You just can't take a bottle out on the course as a rider. Yeah, exactly. So he
So there's the chasing group, still together, they're still working, but, well, it's a little gap, but I don't see that group splitting apart yet. How much feeding or drinking did you take in your race Wait, yesterday? Uh, uh, did well, you see it in, like a piece of pizza, a hot dog out there? I know you were kind of yucking it up. I did start without a bottle, um, because the professionals told me the first thing you need to drop is the bottle cage. Okay. Um, but I actually did stop um, to take uh, two times a beer from a spectator. <laughs> but my race was outside the UCI, it was not the official of UCI race. It so was not I, sanctioned. Yes, I could do whatever I want. So I stopped, uh, let two people pass me and finished a nice third place. I figured, you know what? I don't need to win here. So I stopped, take two beers with the spectators and finish third. Hey, fantastic a, day. On a hot day, you gotta hydrate with the lager in Wisconsin. Absolutely. You get a beer shower like they have out here with the water today, did you? That would be quite a novelty. We should mention it for next year. That's more of an Alp d'Huez type of setting. And just saw the leader coming through. He's still riding up that steep, hard climb. The last one, the track factory, he's still riding up there, so he must still feeling good and strong, still smooth on his bike. He's doing like a flawless performance here. He'll get the bell for one lap to go next time through. And when will we see the battle for second and third really start to develop? Here's our leader, Vanderpool, around that final corner. Bells will be ringing, and the final lap will commence momentarily. Matthew Vanderpool leading from the outset now with one lap remaining in Waterloo, Wisconsin. Ertz in the white jersey at the bottom of the screen starting to move up. Bob Van Ert, the world champion, now at the back of the group. Remember, he really started to drill it on that last lap as they went over the flyover, but has lost some steam since. Well, he's back up to eighth position, so he did make up a few positions from earlier this race when he was first, when he was outside the top ten. So he's still looking good, he's still going strong. Now the second group at 52 seconds back. And remember, two Telenet riders in this group should be able to work together tactically to set up at least one for second place. You would think so, right? Strategically, that would be the play. We'll see if it happens. Next group with Tunerts and Wout Vanner, European and world champion, coming through over a minute down. front of this second group starting to lift the pace. This is what you would expect on the final lap. Oh, you can see this group here in full fly. They even like hit some air on the top of that uh, fly over there. They almost like got both wheels in the air. They got so much speed. They're really going for it here. Point of Van Kessel leading the way at the front of the group. Van Torenhout at the back. Oh, looks like Wout Van Ert starting to make a move again. That's our leader of the entire race, Matthew Vanderpool on the descent. Now working his way back uphill. Now, what a remarkable two weekends in the U.S. it's going to be for Matthew Vanderpool. He's going to complete both of these races in Iowa City and in Waterloo, Wisconsin, without having trailed at all getting the whole shot and the lead on the opening lap of each race and going wire to wire. That's got to be pretty intimidating for the competition to go, are we that bad or is he that good? Tim Melier taking the lead in the second group. He's number nine there. On this descent, taking it carefully, high line. The 
race for second and third right here in this group of four. The final two spots in the podium will be taken up by half of this group. Top step, not in doubt. It belongs to that man with a Dutch fan riding alongside. And a Sega Freya run up for the final time for our second group out there. It looks like these four riders are almost at the same level. Nobody is able to just, you know, get out of this group or drop the others. So it might come down to a little sprint out of this group for the remaining two spots on the podium. Still not a lot of separation between these four. Matthew Vanderpool, the 22-year-old Dutch rider. A coronation for him here on this final lap. Leading by just about 50 seconds. Vanderpool from a family of professional cyclists. His brother, a prominent cyclocross racer who won the 2013 National Under-23 Championship. His dad, a six-time national champion world champion as well and a two-time stage winner at the Tour de France. And oh, don't forget his about his maternal grandfather who was a Grand Tour winner at the Vuelta a España back in the 60s. So quite a pedigree, quite a very legendary cycling family, rich heritage. And the next in line is the 22-year-old Mathieu van der Poel. Showing all indications he's ready to live up to the family name. I think just before that we saw the American champion coming through the picture, getting into the um, Sega Freighter run-up. Now the two Telenet riders leading the way at the front of the second group. Again trying to strategically play the tactical game to get both riders on the podium, but at least get second place on this final lap. Merler and Van Toren out at the back of this group. Sutta and Van Kessel at the front. Bob Benner at the back of the group with Kevin Powells. And through the shower for the final time, Matthew Vanderpool. World champion from 2015. Two time junior world champion. Stage winner on the road at the Tour of Belgium this year. And he's going to be a World Cup winner at the Telenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup for the second week in a row after capturing last week's event in Iowa City. Just about ready to put the finishing touches on the first ever World Cup race in Waterloo, Wisconsin. And now they're opening up the attacks on the pavement in the battle for second place. Sota and Van Kessel trying to distance Melier and Van Torenhout. Now Van Torenhout struggling to stay at the back of this group. Melier, the Belgian, making his move in the green helmet up into second place. Oh, and then he slips and falls. That could cost him. Has to remount very quickly. Now, Corner Van Kessel at the front of the group. And he don't have much time to repair that mistake because it's like half a mile or less. For the second week in a row, on the Telenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup, Matthew Vanderpool, an emphatic, glorious win here in the U.S. as he captures the victory today in Waterloo, Wisconsin. And now the race for the final two spots on the podium as the confetti flies at the finish. Van Kessel. Ahead of Melier, Sota, and Van Torenhout. The Telenet team occupying the first two spots out of this group. Melier has been dropped, Van Torenhout fading. It's going to be the two Telenet riders on the podium today.
Van Kessel and Sota from the Netherlands Two. and Belgium take second and third. Van Torenhout falling off the pace with Merlier late. World champion Wout Van Ert made up some ground late in the closing laps. He finishes within a minute in seventh place. And there's the European champion who also gets a top 10 tune airs at exactly one minute behind our winner, Metu Vanderpool. Quentin Herman's just crossing over as well. Last week he was on the podium in third in Iowa. Wout Van Ert absolutely spent. Steve Chanel crossing the finish line. This race just about an hour and seven minutes. And guys drained and falling over, lying on their backs at the finish because of the demanding conditions. Rarely do you see these scenes at other World Cup races in cyclocross. Guys so drained that they immediately sit down or lie down. And that's what this heat has taken out of some of the world's best. Stephen Hyde, U.S. champion in 18th place, two minutes, 10 seconds back. He's the top American on the day. So Stephen Hyde, by finishing inside the top 20, will get UCI points that'll help in his start position for the next race, which will be in mid-October over in Europe. An easy ride. Coronation, celebration. As the confetti flies for Matu Vanderpool, who gets the win ahead of the two Telenet riders, Van Kessel and Sota, who sprinted away to take second and third. What was most impressive to you about Matu Vanderpool here today in Wisconsin, Jens? How he did not hesitate for a split second to go out all alone in the first lap. He seemed to be so sure that he can pull it off. The confidence he had, that just blew me away. And not only winning the first two races of the World Cup season in Iowa and Wisconsin, but dominating and not even trailing. Taking the whole shot in both races and then riding away from everybody. Winning last week by just over 50 seconds. Winning today by just over half a minute. Could have been more, but he had a bike change late to pick up some water, kind of cruised in there at the end, so conceded seconds that way. Any way you slice it, a convincing, definitive victory for Vanderpool to open up the season. Two of nine races now in the books. Seven left to go, and who is going to challenge that man the rest of the way? They can only hope that he slows down later in the season, that he pays a price for getting into the season, like hitting the ground running, that's what he did. And maybe the other ones take a little slower approach to it and hope they get him in the second half of the season. If that happens, we don't know, but that's the only chance they have. Well, look at it this way, though, if you're Matthew Vanderpool, even if you lose a little and your form slides somewhat, you're winning by so much, you can afford to bleed some time and form. As you see the unofficial results, led by Vanderpool and his 33 second margin over Corner Van Kessel. Don Sota completing the podium, Van Torenhout and Melier rounding out the top five. And all Belgians from third through 10th place. Flip the page, a Belgian in 11th as well. Lars Vanderhaar, Dutch rider. Former leader of the World Cup outside the top 15. Kind of a surprising result. Americans here inside the top 30. Kerry Werner, Tobin Ortenblad, two younger riders just finishing over three minutes back of the winner today against Stephen Hyde, top American in 18th place. But nobody touching the winner for the second straight week, Matu Vanderpool of the Netherlands. Vanderpool winning going away by over half a minute today in front of a good crowd in Waterloo, Wisconsin.
And he's going to have quite the lead now in the overall standings of the World Cup. Two wins out of two races. He's going to have a big advantage on second and third place riders. Now felt the heat, even though he didn't show it on the race course. Wout Van Aert certainly felt it. We saw him lying down at the end as he finished just inside of one minute back, making up some ground late. Wout Van Aert last week 14th in Iowa, but a top 10 today here in Waterloo. Wout Van Aert, dat was al beter dan vorige week, maar toch niet de start die jij wilde, denk ik, hier vandaag. Hè? Nee, ik voelde me eigenlijk een stukje beter, maar uh, vooral in de start was ik eigenlijk al goed. Ik zat op 5 en dan viel Lars van Raar voor mij. Ik kon er niet meer langs en uh, er reed iemand in mijn derailleur van achter. Dan was mijn versnellingsapparaat erbij, was dat krom gekomen. En, uh, toen ik plaats probeerde goed te maken, mijn sluit, sluit ik met mijn schoen los. Dus uh, allemaal in de eerste ronde. En, uh, ik denk dat ik niet in de top 20 zat. Want dan moest ik ook nog eens van fiets wisselen door uh, dat stuk versnellingsapparaat. En dan was het een lange inhaalbeweging, maar het was een parcours waar echt heel weinig mogelijkheden waren om op te schuiven. Dus ik heb me heel veel uh, gefrustreerd in het wiel dat ik niet door kon. En toen ik het tweede deel wel door kon, waren de gaten een beetje gevallen. En, uh, ik denk dat ik wel uh, even sterk was als die groep die voor de tweede plaats reed. Uh, maar ik raakte er gewoon niet meer bij. Dus uh, ja, het gevoel was uh, een stuk beter. Maar uh, ja, het mocht nog niet mee zitten. Ik wou het je net vragen, kwam dat puur door het parcours dat jullie niet meer bij die tweede groep zijn geraakt? Want jij en Toon Aerts, op een gegeven moment ja, waren jullie wel met twee even weg van jullie, van jullie medegezellen. Ja, het, uh, ik had ook het gevoel dat het parcours uh, was. Uh, je had één lang stuk richting je brug waar, waar ik mijn kracht kwijt kon. En uh, voor de rest was, uh, ja, was het heel technisch en uh, gewoon proberen op de fiets te blijven. Want dat was wel echt wel verraderlijk. Dus uh, op een gegeven moment kun je niet sneller dan snel rijden. Dus vanuit die gaten gevallen zijn, uh, heb je maar één, twee, drie stukken op parcours waar je pro kan proberen sneller te rijden als de groep voor u. En uh, ja, uh, klagen over parcours in geen zin. Uh, dat is koers en uh, je moet proberen mee te zijn van begin en vandaag uh, mocht dat niet zijn. Met wat voor gevoel ga je nu naar huis? Ja, het is sowieso een teleurstellende trip geweest, denk ik. Uh, vorige week het resultaat en het gevoel echt slecht. Vandaag het gevoel al een beetje beter, maar... Ik moet eerlijk zijn dat dat nog niet de wout is die ik wil zijn. Uh, maar vandaag uh, heb ik ook wel mijn reden waarom ik niet kan meken ook voor het podium. Dus uh, het is al positiever dan vorige week, maar uh, ik had toch liever uh, een wedstrijd zonder pech gereden deze keer. Bedankt voor je tijd. Dank u. So the standings now in the Telenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup. It's a lead of 50 points for Mathieu van der Poel with wins in each of the first two races. He leads the two Belgians, Van Tornhout and Pauls. But Belgians there near positions fifth through ninth. And as you see, what is typical in cyclocross with a lot of Belgians dominating the top 10. And Stephen Hyde. In the top 20, the U.S. National Cyclocross Champion in 20th place. 61 points so far through the first two races. Wout Van Aert, who you just heard from, just outside the top 10 right now after two somewhat difficult races in the U.S. for him last week in Iowa and today in Wisconsin. Now, plenty of dairy up here in South Central Wisconsin. An unusually hot day with temperatures near 90 degrees, but big sports day with the Green Bay Packers playing about two hours northeast of here up at Lambeau Field. And a terrific property here at the Trek Cycling World Headquarters. This course built right out in back of the actual building. And a great crowd out for this second World Cup race of this season, first ever. World Cup race at this venue and maybe one of many to come. And the culmination of a big cyclocross weekend. They held other races beginning Friday, continuing yesterday, and then wrapping up with the World Cup events today. I know you've been here all weekend, Jens, and been a huge festival atmosphere, a lot of good racing, a lot of fans who are out here today watching, participating earlier in the week over the last few days. And we'll talk more about that in a moment, but Mathieu van der Poel gets the win today. And now we hear from the two-time winner already on the World Cup this season. 
Mathieu van der Poel, het was niet je plan om er in de eerste ronde vandoor te gaan, zei je, voor de cross. En dan doe je het toch. Ja, ik zei het. Ik maak nooit eigenlijk een plan van tevoren, maar ik was weer heel goed weg. En ik werkte af aan in het begin dat ik, uh, dat ik mijn eigen heel sterk voelde. En, uh, ja, ik kreeg ook gelijk een gatje. Ik weet niet of wat er achter mij iets gebeurd is of niet, maar um, ja, ik kreeg gelijk een gat. En ik heb vanaf ronde 1 eigenlijk mijn ding kunnen doen. Ik denk zeker niet dat dat een nadeel was op dit parcours, omdat het was toch heel verraderlijk en uh, heel glad op sommige plekken. Hoe verklaar jij het klassenverschil voorlopig tussen jou en al de rest? Goh, geen idee. Um, ja, ik heb natuurlijk, zoals de meesten weten, een goede zomer achter de rug. En, um, ja, ik voel me eigenlijk wel sterker dan andere jaren. Maar ja, dat, is, dat is meer dan logisch, denk ik. Heeft de hitte je eigenlijk iets van last bezorgd? Nee, helemaal niet. Ik, zit net ook, ik heb eigenlijk bijna geen last van de warmte gehad. En ik denk dat we een heel goede keuze hebben gemaakt om hier vrijdag te crossen. Waar de gevoelstemperatuur nog een stuk hoger lag uh, voor mij. En, ik um, denk dat dat een heel goede beslissing was van het team en van mij om, om dat te doen, om er, uh, om er aan te winnen. Dat is drie op drie voor jou hier in de Verenigde Staten. Hè? Uh, met wat voor gevoel ga je nu naar huis? Ja, ik ben, ben super tevreden natuurlijk. Uh, ook voor mij blijft dat het leukste wat er is winnen. En uiteindelijk uh, ja, doe ik daar toch al mijn trainingen voor. En om zo rond te rijden, dat is, dat is hetgeen waarvoor ik uh, wielrenner ben. En je broer heeft ook gewonnen vandaag, wist je dat al? Ja, ik heb vanochtend gevolgd via de livestream. Dus, uh, ja, dat was heel leuk natuurlijk. Ik denk uh, dat de ploeg het redelijk goed doet momenteel. Dikke proficiat. In Engels? We hebben hetzelfde meteen doen. Mathieu van der Poel, um, first lap and off you were. How can you explain that? <laughs> I can't. Uh, I think I had a really good start and the course was really tricky and uh, I think it wasn't a disadvantage to be at the front on my own. And I could do my own thing, choose my own lines, and uh, I think uh, it was my strength today. It was hot today, but did the heat even bother you at all? No, I think we made a good decision with the team and myself to race on, uh, on Friday. I think the temperature was even higher then, and I was uh, really good adapted today. And uh, yeah, no, I think we, we had uh, also good preparation uh, with all the ice we had, and uh, I think, uh, yeah, we did a good job to protect myself from the heat. Congratulations, thank you. Well, he was speaking about some of the ice that he put on himself and some of the water and some of the essential preparations ahead of dealing with the heat that no doubt helped him. But even he was at a loss for words to explain how he gets away from everybody else in the first lap and doesn't look back. It was impressive indeed, and uh, yeah, he never looked back once, you know, he, he seemed to like knew, okay, I dropped them, I don't even need to look back to them. So that was, that was really impressive, and I mean, it was a good field, you know, we had the reigning world champion here, and nobody had a recipe to beat him. His fellow Dutch rider, Corne van Kessel, won the sprint for second place as he finishes behind Matthew van der Poel, and now here is van Kessel near the finish. Meneer Van Kessel, um, wat valt er te doen tegen Mathieu van der Poel als hij zo begint? Uh, heel weinig, denk ik. Uh, vandaag uh, had ik het, het goede wiel direct te pakken in de start. En uh, er was eigenlijk vrij weinig aan te doen. Ik probeerde mijn eigen tempo te rijden en uh, niet op te blazen, omdat ik de, vri de vrijdag wel wat gedaan had. En uh, daar, ik denk dat, we dat, dat ik daar goed in geslagen ben om een tweede plaats uit de brand te slepen. En, ja, er valt niet veel tijd te doen, denk ik. Is dat dan ontmoedigend voor jou als renner als je meteen weet van ja, die gaan we niet meer terugzien? Je moet gewoon op een andere manier koersen. Uh, als je weet dat hij direct wegrijdt, ja, moet je gewoon rijden voor de tweede plaats. En, uh, dat is misschien niet de goede instelling, maar uh, dat is wel de instelling om zo hoog mogelijk te geraken in de wedstrijd. Wel de tweede plaats hier op het parcours van Trek. Dan moet je met een positief gevoel terug naar huis gaan, veronderstel ik. Ja, zeker. Het is een hele goede afsluiter. Uh, we worden hier heel goed ontvangen. We kunnen hier uh, in de werkplaats van, uh, van Trek uh, ons, ons ding doen. Uh, heel een dag cool zitten en uh, ja, dat worden hier goed, uh, goed verzorgd. De ploeg had in het begin in de eerste bocht al wat pech. Um, en dan hebben jullie, ja, jullie met twee de eer hoog gehouden. Hè? Um, dat moet ook mooi zijn voor de ploeg dat jullie daarvoor zorgen dat jullie het podium eigenlijk vervolledigen. Ja, dat denk ik wel. Zeker hier, omdat hij bij trek is, dat we deze wereldbeker met twee en drie op het podium kunnen staan. Is zeer mooi. En uh, Quinten die viel direct, of Lars die viel direct in de eerste bocht. En Quinten viel een ronde later in dezelfde bocht op dezelfde manier. En ja, dan weet je eigenlijk wel dat, uh, dat het heel glad is. En, en uh, ondanks de droogte, het, het, het gras waarschuwt niet en het schuift ineens. Heb je last gehad van die hitte hier? 
Ja, we stonden op, op drie posten, denk ik, stonden ze met water over ons te gooien. En uh, dat deed wel elke, elke punt die hij wel uh, terug deugd om, uh, om daar te passeren. Ik was gestart met een ringbus, maar die was ik voor de eerste post al kwijt. Hartelijk bedankt en nog eens een dikke proficiat. Het yep. is Gary Fisher. Who was born in Oakland, California, and is considered one of the inventors of the modern mountain bike. Really the pioneer. And competed himself in road and track races starting at the age of 12. Just a legend in the sport. And here in Waterloo for this first time World Cup event at this venue at the world headquarters of the Trek Bicycle Company. And what a day it was as Metu Vanderpool gets the victory. These are some of the amateurs racing on the course right now. Dan Sota is the third member of the podium, finishing on the body and bottom step today. And here he is after his performance. Dan Sota, what goes in you om als je Mathieu van der Poel zo ziet vertrekken vanaf uh, vanaf de start? Ja, ik heb hem eigenlijk niet zien vertrekken. Uh, ik zat een beetje uh, tussen alle valpartijen en uh, schermutselingen in, dus uh, ik heb het eigenlijk niet gezien. Ik zag dat hij de eerste ronde al uh, ja, 10, 15 seconden weg was en dan, uh, ja, dan weet je dat je nooit meer terugkomt. Zijn die valpartijen en die schermutselingen de redenen dat jullie er niet meer bij zijn geraakt, denk je? Nee, zeker niet. Ik denk uh, of dat er nu gevallen wordt of niet. Ik denk dat Mathieu hier altijd gewonnen had. Dat is echt een parcours voor hem. Het schoof heel hard, dus uh, het was echt uh, puur op techniek. Je hebt zelf wel een dijk van de wedstrijd gereden opnieuw. Wat vind je zelf van je cross? Ja, ik uh, ben wel heel tevreden. Ik heb altijd op kop proberen te blijven rijden als de rest niet wou rijden. Omdat ik niet graag uit uh, dat er meer terug zou komen omdat dan echt uh, heel tijd vechten zou zijn voor uh, uw plaats. Dus ja, ik heb dan zelf maar gereden. Uh, dus. Het is door jouw kopwerk wel dat Telenet Videa hier plaatsen 2 en 3 eigenlijk wat te pakken heeft. Want zoals je zegt, jij hebt constant zitten sleuren aan uh, de kop van dat groepje. Ja, ik wist dat als ik zelf blijf rijden, maar ik ook aan zijn podium. En uh, ja, als we allemaal wachten op uh, Wout van Aert en, uh, en de rest, ja, dan, dan pakt hij misschien de tweede of de derde plaats. Dus ja, soms moet het ook gewoon eens durven rijden, denk ik. Proficiat, hartelijk bedankt. Dank u. Two Dutch riders and one Belgian on the podium here today. As the fans still milling around somewhat, and what a weekend it was for them to come out. Despite the heat, sunny conditions, no real other competition in terms of nearby athletics. I did mention that the Packers are playing today two hours northeast of here, but the biggest other attraction in this area is Wisconsin Badger football, but they were idle this week. They had a bye, so no football weekend to contend with. So even though Madison is just about a 20 minute drive away from here, Madtown, as they call it, the Badgers were not competing with the cyclocross, and that gave this event an opportunity to have the stage all to itself. And boy, did they take advantage perhaps thinking that maybe a world championship would come here someday. And they are starting to lay the foundation here at the Trek World Headquarters and starting with their very first World Cup event, a rousing success this weekend in South Central Wisconsin. As the podium ceremony gets set to commence here near the finish of the race. Top three. Now, Jens, they have about a month off before the World Cup resumes in Europe in mid-October. So that's plenty of time for other riders to regroup, focus on what they can do to try and get to Matu Vanderpool. But there's a lot of time, but maybe not a lot of options. That's the thing. It is uh, not enough options for them because the way Matthew looks, he is just superior everywhere. Everywhere. Bike handling, he's just stronger, faster, better skills, faster on the downhills. So I don't even know where the other one should start to uh, actually reduce the gap they have towards him. He's just in his own league in a moment, clearly. That is the World Cup leader's jersey he's putting on now. Many of these riders departing pretty quickly to head back to Europe because there is some other racing, not World Cup competition, but other 
prestigious cyclocross racing to be done in the coming weeks. It's almost like a second league they have there um, in, these Bel uh, in Belgium and they take it serious. It's important for every Belgian rider to be there and be part of it. Now the Dutch national anthem. Two weeks in the U.S. and two decisive victories for the 22-year-old Matu Vanderpool. Never even trailed in Iowa City or today in Waterloo, Wisconsin. And presenting the checks to the riders on the podium now. Equal prize money for the first time for the women and the men this weekend in Waterloo. And a Wisconsin Badger hockey jersey on top of it. The Badgers playing in nearby Madison at the Cole Center. One of the most popular draws, always very well attended during the winter months. And now there is the reigning women's world champion and the Victoria Sanikant, who won here earlier today in the ladies event. And Wisconsin also has a women's team in Badger hockey, so she gets the jersey as well. So they have the World Cup leaders jerseys and Wisconsin Badger hockey jerseys to take back with them. And a check that's bigger than all of it. Still waiting for hockey season here in Wisconsin, though. A hot one today, temperature near 90 degrees, but undeterred was Matu Vanderpool of the Netherlands, who gets the win for the second week in a row on the Cyclocross World Cup. And now for Jens Vogt, I'm Steve Schlanger. Thanks for joining us, everyone, for this second race of the 2017-18 Telenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup. And now we say so long from Waterloo, Wisconsin, just outside of Madison.